guys, ICC Cup Fitz back here for another game, and it's gonna be a PvP today, and sponsoring a team's despa or supporting them, or I guess just showing for them. It's gonna be Light Orbit. Oddly enough, Light Orbit, I think, was the same color in the PvZ for the game one of this series. Uh, so yeah, spawning in the bottom right, and the spawning in the top right, we have the Red Protoss Sentinel uh, showing for. Team Courage or Courage, I guess, is how they shortened it. Map is Jade like an inside out fighting spirit. Your main is pretty ginormous as it is. You're, you have a ramp, but you're on the low ground, so it's kind of like an opposite from fighting spirit. Your natural is not too hard to secure. A little, little choke here, and then uh, your third is again up here on the high ground. Uh, and depending on where the spawning locations are, uh, they'll take their thirds. Most likely. Uh, Light Orbit is not going to be taking that expand just because uh, he'll be expanding towards his opponent. Unlike, uh, unlike, uh, what's his name? <sighs> uh, Sentinel, where he'd be expanding away from his opponent. So uh, he'll have a harder time. Uh, so definitely the 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 spawning locations will probably give uh, what should we call it? Uh, Light Orbit a disadvantage in the series, but that's all right. I'm sure uh, we'll have to see. Ho hopefully, Light Orbit won't fall apart like the last game, or because like that really wacky game that we saw earlier, where it just both players kind of did nothing at the end. So, uh, for stats wise, Light Orbit is averaging 175 and maxing at 309. Very similar to his stats in uh, game number one. He's actually has a higher EPM this game than he did in the first game. So, uh, f and now for this game. Uh, Sentinel is averaging once, uh, yeah, averaging 176 APM and maxing at 269. Again, uh, like I've said, I'll repeat myself like in the last cast. It depends on if you want to actually uh, combat com combat those uh, stats together. It's just one of the few statistics I can. And if you like them, then good, yay for you. If you don't like them, then uh, sorry, you have to deal with it. So. Uh, two gate pressure or two gate. It tends to be you go a two gate into either. Uh, actual two gate or you go uh, you get in a simulator and you'll get uh, cyber core after that so uh, they know that PvP mirror matchups tend to have a much more more aggression in them so we'll have to see kind of how it goes and he already has a sell it out uh, and and more macro style games you won't normally see the uh, even a like, gateway finish by like three minutes because they'll fast expand out uh, but sim very similar builds uh, no gas by uh, either player quite yet uh, Pretty much, they'll just be saying normal, normal kind of stuff. Uh, now, for other information, we have actually an interesting idea for videos. I'm not sure if you, if this would be something you're that you'd be interested in, um, but the idea would be that we have this guy named Scan, and he's like a really, really good player, or at least I've, at least he's a high C rank player, so it's not bad. By any means. Um, I'm sorry about my phone going off, though. I'm sorry about that. So, uh, the idea is that he is he would do a live stream, or he would give me a live recording of him playing, and then I'd kind of commentate what he's doing. And then it'd be pretty cool. I don't think I'd actually do it. I think I'd have the one of the other casters that know the game much, much better than I do. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think that'd be pretty interesting. Like, a front first-person view on it would be kind of more interesting than me kind of just... You know, casting because obviously you're gonna miss certain aspects to the game when you're recording it like this. Um, for example, I probably wouldn't have seen in game one that the guy killing off his own hatchery, which seemed pretty counter <laughs> counterproductive as he didn't even need to kill off his own hatchery for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, so uh, he's gonna be getting cybercore up. He's getting a forge and expand up. So. Uh, this is where their builds kind of differ differentiate. Uh, he will have quite a few zealots to deal with this, though. Uh, he has the right positioning, so he shouldn't be. Able there should be a lot, much, much damage I should do. I, I, the interesting thing to note here is I'm not sure if this is the best position for uh, Sentinel to be in because now it's going to be three zealots on three zealots versus him having to be able to swarm around all, all all six of his zealots versus these five. So it's just something interesting to note. That. I don't know if it really helps him or not, but. This will not allow him to get any uh, any kind of expand up, but this will allow him to get more tech up. Uh, so he's going to be teching more than he will be, so his tech will be as slightly delayed uh, as he won't have his cyber core, and he's already getting his Citadel of Doom up. So he might be getting DTs up. Um, and the cyber core, this delayed cyber core, he most, he, he most likely will have to go into Robo um, facility because he just doesn't want to have that DT 
Um, but he looks like he'll, he will be pushing out and even a third gateway up here. Surprising, but I wouldn't be surprised for a Temple Archive to be shut down right about now. Yep, and it does go down. And the reason that for that is he's probably just trying to go for something that's more of a DT rush, as they seem to be much more, much much more common. But if he doesn't get a, but these cans will stop any kind of DT pressure. It's kind of good to have those, and just for defensive purposes. But the thing to note is you, as as being a Protoss player, I think it's really neat. you kind of. I I couldn't measure this, but I I know to the point where you want to know how many cannons you want. You don't want to you don't want to build like a thousand cannons. For something for just like for one DT, and they're not going to be taking your front door. They're going for more of a harass build. You don't want to build a thousand cans at your front door. You want to know where A to put them and B to when to know to stop putting down cans because then they won't be as cost effective. Three is all right because you don't want that. You definitely don't want a DT coming in slashing your probes away, and you have nothing to fight against that. But he even has a, D a defensive cannon here, so DT harass is really not going to do much at all. Will he be getting that DT up? He'll be getting up two just because if the probably the philosophy this guy has is. Um, and I probably go by this philosophy too. If you can almost, I mean, if you can almost, it, it's either 300 minerals to either completely destroy your opponent and you can do that, then why not invest the 300 minerals just to have the option to possibly end the game just outright there because he didn't have detection out. Uh, even getting these Dragoons for a sweating drop. So this guy's really all over that kind of dropping in her athlete. But we'll be getting his uh, expand really late. Uh, we'll be getting Forge finally up. Uh, so he will be really far behind if this doesn't do Guaranteed damage, but that's a lot of cannons. And you know, he's playing it just so safe right now. Uh, 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 light orbit, uh, orbit, orbit's light. Uh, it team Despot is playing very, very strong. Uh, he will be pushing up here. Uh, uh, will he be able to do damage though? This is melee, and they're kind of coming up here. Uh, will the DT be able to slip in there? Will it get through? It will, but the, that cannon's there. So he's not really going to be able to do much nice, smart cannon positioning over here. Uh, and he didn't actually... He just lost everything. And Wow. I really don't think that was really cost-effective for at all for Sentinel. At all. And I'm just I'm just surprised by that. He just left thing in there. He was really trying to guarantee damage with that DT. And, you know, that's going to happen a lot in D-Rank. And I think the higher the D-Rank is, the, is the less secure that build is. Uh... It's strong for lower, lower D rank, but the higher you get up, the the, the more easy it is to shut down. Because all he had to do was just play somewhat smart, go expand. He sees that his expo his, his opponent's not fat, he's not expanding yet, so he's most likely going DT tech, almost something crazy, and he just put up three cannons and then just put another base down here. Now he has all of his probes, and now the pro now he's so far behind. Because you now now a he just completely lost all of his whole army, and b those DTs didn't do as much damage. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't you shouldn't neglect DTs, but it's just the point where he decided he was gonna ha he 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 put him in the scenario where he had to do damage to make that like at all effective. So, something there. Other than the fact where he could have gone a more like this guy did is where he took an expand and then he went for. Uh, now again, you have to look back though, because he, he there was a whole bunch of zealots out here. He could have potentially tried to push that back, which he probably could have. But he could have um, expanded and then maybe gotten Templar Archives because he needs that for the regular PvP build anyway. But he didn't necessarily need to rush for DT tech because now he's behind. Uh, but it's just it's just kind of matter of preference. You know what you see from your opponent. Nothing is always going to be like okay, that's the right move. This could have been the wrong. This could have been the wrong scenario if he was going maybe reaver drop uh, or something along those lines. I mean, a can's always good, but if a reaver can outrange that and just start shooting scarabs at it and then push the shuttle away, it's, it's just something to note there. I mean, it's not. So, so uh, they're kind of just they're not being too too active right now. Uh, and be going like just going on my little tangent. We'll be getting up his robo facility right now. We'll be getting plus one attack. I believe it's plus one. It could be plus two. Uh, no. It's, Going to be plus one. Will he be getting his own upgrade? It looks like he will. So looking at the, the upgrades, this one's slightly ahead, but uh, if they both engage, they'll both have the similar upgrades in time. This DT is like, yo, dude, I need to kill off that probe. And then he's like, nope, nope, nope. With me, with my red cape, I'm going to go dominate stuff. That DT will just look so badass, I'm not going to lie. But I really like this like red color from the Protoss. I really like it. Teal is like, eh. I don't like teal that much. Uh, but... I don't even know that I can't find on the color wheel what this looks like. Oh, uh, ooh, DT might be able to do some damage here, get at least a kill on the dragoon, but doesn't want to go in too far. As those can will be in range to fire at him and detect him, so that'll probably be an instant dead for that DT. 
Uh, looks like Probe is going to be trying to take another expand shortly. Oh, will he lose it? No, he will not. I guess a free uh, Dragoon kill. Two of them, actually. Looks like two kills. So uh, that DT is being pretty cost effective. Being, uh, being really annoying, too, because he now he has to get that Robo facility out, but he will have two observers queued up. And it's going to be 98 supply, 266. And you can just see the supply difference from the different builds that they've gone. You know, Red, I don't think, went to the most smartest build choice, but, you know, he opted to go for that and just didn't do damage. So it's now it's going to be... Uh, probably 100, no, 98 supply to 101 supply now to... Sorry, and it looks like he's going to be pushing out. So he doesn't even have cannons to deal with this, and this will be pretty bad because it will have plus one, and that's a lot of Dragoons. And I don't know if he's going to be able to hold this off. If he can put down a couple cannons, he will have six gateways, so he'll be, he is producing a lot. Will he have Storm in time? Yeah, I don't think he will. Uh, as Dragoon Zealots tend to go up the map pretty fairly efficiently, he will have his Templar Archives up, though. Uh, will that be able to hold this off? I don't know. Uh, as he doesn't have Storm completed yet, and those High Temple are getting stuck in the front. Especially if those get targeted down, that's going to be not looking too good. And it looks like it's just Red get losing his entire army right here. Silly but surely, yeah, Tio's pushing up this with no problem whatsoever. Uh, no Storm out, and High Temple is being targeted by that Zealot. Will it go down before Storm does go off? It looks like it will. Is Storm completed? I don't know. It is completed. Uh, will Storm be able to go off? Storm does go off. We'll get off. It will just soften up the army, but there's nothing else to really fight that. And what does he have? He only has six gate. Uh, will he be able to fight this off? That will be another wave of zealots. But by the time that the zealot wave comes out, a lot of these probes are going to be way long. Uh, long the and there's the GG by Sentinel. And wow, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty interesting PvP. I mean, it just. It just kind of shows what the decision making happens in the game, where both players will go the same thing, and then they kind of go off their tech paths, and then depending on the scenario, I think it kind of shows what happens when one player does that build and another player, and I think that's a really good game to look at. So now Light Orbit did win, so Light Orbit actually won both of his games, being a pretty strong player, uh, at least in this game, his early early game is much much better than his late game of what I've seen of Light Orbit. Uh, so, uh, A-Team's Despa is actually ahead right now 2-1 in the series. We'll have to see if uh, Atomic Archon versus uh, SGS's Naza, uh, if Naza can uh, win a victory and uh, even out the score for this. I will we'll have to see for sure. And uh, that's that's going to be it, guys. And fifth tip of the game, uh, again, again, just to Sentinel, I don't think you did much of it wrong, per se. Your build wasn't terribly off. I mean, I'm looking at your your minerals right now, you, you, you could have been macroing better, but that's just such a vague thing to talk about. Uh, production facilities would be one, or or number two, I think you should improve on, it's just making better decisions. Now again, PvP might not be your strongest thing. People tend to have better matchups than others, and PvP might not be your most showcasing uh, uh, matchups, but I mean, that's not something you can't improve on. Something I'd just say is maybe not opt to, I've said this in the previous cast before, don't try to put yourself in a scenario where you have to go DT early on just to, you know, just to put yourself in a better position. Try to get your mechanics up to a point where you can, you know, combat these kind of higher level players. Um, not to say that Light was better than you. I mean, you had a, you had one higher, one uh, action, action per minute than he did averaging, but beside the point, uh, I think you, you, the, the decision to go DT tech instead of going for more of a an expand, and I realize that you were you were under you were under pressure, and that's kind of what the pressure does. It doesn't make you it doesn't allow you it kind of fogs up your mind about making better decisions, which is the whole mental game of StarCraft, and that's kind of something that uh, comes to the StarCraft pro uh, not pro scene, but like competition scene. So I say in that scenario, it may have done the same thing what uh, Light Orbit did, where he went. He went a fast expand, or he went and expand behind the on the aggression, then expand behind after you pull off his thing, and then try to produce more units and stuff. I think that's kind of what put you behind, is because you didn't have enough, you know, stuff to do it. And then you lost your whole army pretty much when you engage. And he's gonna outproduce you in when he's off to base. So that's just something to work on. Either or just don't attack super early on, and then see if you can do some like uh, um, harass. But great game by you uh, by both players interesting pvp nonetheless and have a great day guys i'll be back with game number four pretty shortly versus atomic mass Archon. it's gonna be a p on we're just gonna be doing eighth team death but on ground zero versus sgs's nasa which is gonna be a terran so we're gonna have our first tvp of our first terran showing up as nasa in this series all right have fun guys peace